So in this chapter, we've focused on what happens with the unit tangent vector and with the unit normal vector, that is velocity and acceleration. But look, there's more, because that acceleration vector is also evolving. And it and the curves that go with it can twist out of the osculating plane. Now what regulates that is something called the binormal vector. This is denoted b and is defined to be the cross product of the unit tangent with the unit normal vector. This third vector gives a coordinate frame that is adapted to the curve. Now when your curve twists out of the oculating plane, that twist occurs with some strength. That, that coefficient is denoted tau and is called the torsion. If you want a, a definition for torsion, tau is a function of time t. It can be described in terms of the rate of change of the binormal vector with respect to arc length, dotted with the unit normal vector, and then with a, with a minus sign in front of it for somewhat anomalous historical reasons. Now, again, the formula doesn't matter so much as the intuition that the torsion is an analog of the curvature, and in the same way, that the curvature is telling you how you are uh, curving away from the tangential direction, the torsion is telling you to what degree you are twisting out of that osculating plane, out of that plane defined by the unit tangent and the unit normal directions. Now it's definitely worth uh, looking at examples of curves that have interesting curvature behavior, that have interesting torsion behavior, to see how these vectors, how this uh, frame given by tangent, normal, and binormal directions evolves. There's a lot of beautiful mathematics behind this that we're not going to cover in depth, but it is bonus time and we can at least hint at some of the many things that one could learn further in this subject. For example, there is a beautiful and compact set of differential equations that tell you exactly how the unit tangent, the unit normal, and the unit binormal vectors evolve. These so-called uh, Frenet-Serre equations are very beautiful, very compact. They're all expressed in terms of the curvature and the torsion, and that tells you a lot about how important those coefficients are. Now, if you want to compute torsion, well, you know, you're in for some work. There are some formulae that work in 3D and that really um, hint at the fact that this is giving you something like the next term in a Taylor series-like approximation to the curve. Now, these formulae aren't central to the grand story of calculus, but if you're interested in this, you might want to check out a course in differential geometry where we focused on the differential geometry of curves, what happens for surfaces, and more is so interesting.